look at diminished seventh chords right at the start of the Secret Sound Bites Advanced series. But in this lesson, we'll be bringing it into line with our discussion on symmetrical chords in general, and also take a look at how its symmetrical properties open up a couple of fun ways that this chord can be used. The diminished seventh chord occurs naturally when we harmonise the harmonic minor scale on the seventh degree of that scale. Remember the harmonic minor scale is the minor scale that retains the natural seventh. So its formula is simply flat three, flat six. diminished seventh chords shown here in their natural habitat. By that I mean I've shown the four diminished seventh chords that occur on the seventh degree of the harmonic minor scales in the keys of A minor, C minor, E flat minor and G flat minor. Again, the complex key signatures, as well as the additional accidentals in this case, make it very hard to spot any significant connection between these four chords. Until we zoom in and work out the names of the notes in each chord. which I've done here on the left by applying the diminished seventh formula 1, flat 3, flat 5, double flatted seventh to the major scale of the root note of each of the four chords. And on the right I've listed the enharmonic equivalents that show up when we do this. So now we can clearly see that all four of these chords contain the same four notes. Four chords, all of the same type, proving to be synonyms. There must be some serious symmetry involved here. And as in the last lesson, a good way to reveal the symmetry is to plot the notes against the chromatic scale, like this. And we can see that the notes are all the same distance from each other. We can call this distance three half steps, three semitones, or a tone and a half. Or most usefully in the long run, simply think of it as a minor third. This makes the diminished seventh chord the ideal choice for providing uh, a sound effect whenever you want to show a smooth gradual transition from one thing to another. Which is why you often hear it in the background music of cartoons where, for example, Tom is chasing Jerry up a ladder. <laughs> there is using this diminished seventh chord shape rooted on the fourth string. So I've got starting with my first finger, second fret on the fourth string, second finger, second fret on the second string, third finger on the third fret on the third string, pinky top string on the third fret. And then simply playing that as a straight arpeggio. And then taking the whole chord shape up three semitones or a minor third, from there to there, and another minor third, and another minor third, and another minor third. So really those are all, they could all be considered inversions of the same chord. But then when they run back down the ladder I might switch to using 
all three of the um, diminished seventh chord shapes. So I'm playing the same shape chromatically. <laughs> thing that the symmetry of the diminished seventh chord allows us is to string together a whole bunch of them whenever uh, a single diminished seventh chord is called for in a particular chord sequence. For example here's a fairly commonly used sequence um, that I'm using here for a version of the jazz blues standard Ain't Nobody's Business. <laughs> After the G chord, there's a diminished chord, which we could call F diminished. Well, if that's written as F diminished, I'd probably just play it like that. But I've also got the option of running that chord shape up the fretboard, just as I did with the Tom and Jerry ladder chase just now. And basically fitted as many of those as you've got time and space for. And you get an effect something like this. this straight up or up and down again. So look out for opportunities to play around with those ideas. And like me, you may be tempted to overdo it a bit at first, which of course is fine when you're working out the ideas, just remember to rein it in a little bit in actual performance. In the next lesson, we'll be concluding our tour of these symmetrical chords by taking a close look at the augmented triad. And again, I'll be showing you a few fun applications for that. If you enjoyed this little video, please click on the like button if there is one, or leave a comment, and do feel free to share the video with your friends. And if you're not yet a site member and would like to gain access to all our guitar teaching materials, please visit the Secret Guitar Teacher site and take a free look round at what's available there. See you again soon.